everyone welcome back to Alice in the Giant Bookshelf my name's Alice and today's video is an update on my reading progress for August Hi everyone welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name's Alice and on my channel I talk a lot about all of the books that I have yet to read on my giant TBR of over 200 books. So if you enjoy people talking about books they've yet to read and some books they have already read then please do subscribe and stay tuned. Today I thought I'd give you a bit of an update on how I've been getting on with reading for August and I feel like August has got off to a little bit of a slow start. I don't feel like I've been reading as much this month but then I did have a very productive reading month last month so maybe I'm just comparing too hard. As is customary for the months that I've been on booktube I started off the month very quickly and read two books in two days pretty much. My mission for this month was to read some of the books that were on my bookshelf that I really didn't want to read anymore and I succeeded in getting two of those read in the first two days of the month. So I started off with a Riverdale book which is called Get Out of Town and it's by Mikkel Osto. This book <laughs> lived up to the hype I was giving it as a book I didn't want to read. It only took me a day because it's quite short and to be honest not a lot happens in it and there's several pages where it's just told in text messages. If you don't know what Riverdale is it's a TV series on well it's on Netflix here in the UK, I'm not sure what channel it's on in the US. It had a great first series with a bit of a murder mystery in it and it's based on Archie comics and actually has the characters of Archie, Betty, Veronica, Cheryl Blossom and several others. However, from about midway through series two onwards the series started to get a bit ridiculous and they're now on series five and I'm still watching it out of interest for the characters but it has got pretty crazy so wasn't expecting very much of this book to be honest and it it delivered exactly that. I feel like sometimes when you read a book that is based within the world of a series it feels like reading fan fiction and this book didn't really do anything to dispel me of the thought that I was reading fan fiction. I nearly DNF'd this and I never DNF books. I nearly DNF'd it after six pages because I'd already found two typos. I really really think that books that have gone out into the world could, could be better edited than that. They weren't difficult typos to find, they were right there. So not sure about the editing on this book but anyway. I'm sure a lot of people who enjoy the Riverdale series probably teenagers would love this book. It wrote the four main characters of Riverdale fairly well but I did feel like I was reading fan fiction and I did feel like unfortunately that I was reading something that was actually more boring than fan fiction because nothing really happened in it. So if you wanted to read everything that was put out about Riverdale you could read this book but otherwise I definitely wouldn't bother. That was my first book of the month, got it out of the way very quickly didn't DNF it. I went straight on to the smallest book on the TBR for the month and that's The Blindfold by Siri Hustvet. This, this is Siri Hustvet's debut and it's also the first book of hers that I have read but I do have two more of her books on my shelf. Now the good news is I definitely will be reading those other two books I think. I'm really intrigued by Siri Hustvet's writing. It's a very intriguing book but it's also a very strange book. I enjoyed this. It's written in four parts and it's about a student called Iris. In the four different parts Iris tells us her story. It's a direct first person narrated book and to me this felt like almost like four short stories. The first three you don't really know where in the timeline of Iris's life those three stories have happened. It's only in the fourth part that Iris actually ties all three of the events into one story into one final story and tells us what happened after those events. Oh yeah Iris's story was quite interesting but each time I read a part I would have liked to know more about that part of the story especially part one I found really interesting and intriguing and I would have liked that storyline to have developed more and I thought that that was what the story was going to be about. We don't actually find out about the blindfold itself until the very last story. I'm not really sure 
why you would call this book the blindfold particularly but anyway Iris has various relationships going on and various stresses in her life and it's, it's quite an interesting story as stories go. If you are going to read this be prepared that it is quite weird and it's, it comes across as three unrelated short stories about one person followed by one final story wrapping them all up together which is fine. It's a very short book, I sat and read this in one day pretty much in one sitting, it's only 222 pages so it was a good book to get me going with reading for the month and it encouraged me that not all of the books that I don't want to read on my TBR are going to be bad experiences reading them. And since then I've not really made much progress with the giant TBR because I've been doing some rereading. I've reread two Agatha Christie's this month, A Caribbean Mystery and Why Didn't They Ask Evans. Now I read A Caribbean Mystery first and I read this for Christie Fest which is hosted by Julie at Hungry Bookworm. I will link her channel in the description below in case you want to get in touch and join the Christie Fest group. Christie Fest involves reading one Agatha Christie book each month and then having a chat about it. It's a very cool group and I enjoy the excitement of rereading the Agatha Christie books. And yet again, with the Caribbean mystery, I had no recollection of who done it in this. I first read this in 2013 and I had forgotten all of the vital details of the plot apart from like the opening premise with Miss Marple. So what I will say about this book is I enjoyed it much more on the second reading and I think that's because my opinion of Miss Marple has improved over the years. When I first read these books I didn't really enjoy the Marple books, I really only enjoyed the Poirot ones and the standalones and Miss Marple will never be my favourite Agatha Christie character but she really does hold her own in this book and it's a very enjoyable read. It's a good one to read in the summertime because it's set on a Caribbean island uh, where Miss Marple has gone to get some rest and recuperation but of course she doesn't get any rest and recuperation because she ends up investigating a murder as always. Miss Marple is definitely at her most resourceful and um, at her most active in this book. Many of the Marple books that I really really enjoy. She's very passive in them, she's not in the books very much but this one she is in from cover to cover and I really love this cover by the way, I might take my price sticker off but I love this uh, cover of a bird who has got a knife for a beak, it's very cool cover art. Yeah so I really enjoyed reading this for Christie Fest and I enjoyed the discussion afterwards and I would recommend this as a Marple book to read if you like reading Miss Marple. As I've said this isn't my favourite Miss Marple book and it's definitely not my favourite Agatha Christie. I enjoyed it so much more the second time around. Secondly I reread Why Didn't They Ask Evans and this was my very first buddy read so that was very exciting and I buddy read this with Rachel who is one of my subscribers. Really enjoyed chatting with Rachel about this book and again I read the first read this in 2013 I knew this was one that I really loved and I knew that the out of all the titles that Agatha Christie made up why didn't they ask Evans is my favorite title of a book possibly my favorite title of a book even not Agatha Christie because it's just so intriguing and interesting. Anyway this book is a standalone by Agatha Christie and it centers around two brilliant characters called Bobby and Frankie. Frankie is actually Lady Frances Derwent and she is just a brilliant character. I would say that Frankie is probably my favourite character in Agatha Christie besides Poirot. I really wish, having read this a second time, I really wish that Agatha Christie had written a few more books with Frankie and Bobby investigating because they are just a fantastic twosome. I enjoy them more than Tommy and Tuppence who were actually Agatha Christie's like pair of investigators that appeared in five books so I would have liked Agatha Christie to write about Frankie and Bobby again but she didn't but this is a great standalone book. I really enjoyed it. Yeah Frankie and Bobby start to investigate when 
Bobby witnesses a man's dying words. The man has fallen from a cliff right by where Bobby is playing golf. Then even more suspicious circumstances lead Frankie and Bobby into an investigation. I definitely think this is one of my favourite Agatha Christie standalones, aside from probably And Then There Were None and maybe Towards Zero, which I haven't reread yet, but I know that I like it. This is a, one of the funnier Agatha Christie's. It's quite amusing. There's a lot of good things to be had in why didn't they ask Evans? So I would highly recommend this if you would like to read an Agatha Christie standalone that is quite fun but also very murderous. <laughs> this was a brilliant read, really enjoyed my reread of it, really enjoyed Buddy reading it and chatting about it as I went along. So thank you Rachel for Buddy reading this with me, I had an absolutely brilliant time with this book. I've also completed two audiobooks, which were the second and third books in the Shadow and Bone trilogy by Lee Bardugo. The first one of these, Siege and Storm, I was listening to at the end of last month, I think. Started listening to it straight after Shadow and Bone, but I had a little bit of a break from it while I was listening to the audiobook of Emma for Jane Austen July. I then went straight on to listen to Ruin and Rising because it I just couldn't stop and I have had to sort of binge listen to Ruin and Rising for a couple of days. I really, really enjoyed these books. This is probably the first YA series that I've read in a very, very long time that I've enjoyed as much as possibly even more than The Hunger Games. I hold up The Hunger Games as probably my favourite YA trilogy that I've read and nothing I've read since has come close. Didn't really enjoy the Maze Runner series as much definitely didn't enjoy the Divergent series as much. Yeah, I've read multiple other ones that don't even come close, but this has got a really good fantasy world in it. And I'm not really one for fantasy worlds, but I did enjoy this one. It's set in a place called Ravka, and I just loved the main character, Alina and Mal, and there's so many other good characters in it as well, and so many interesting plot points. So I am really looking forward to watching the Netflix series of this, but I do want to read Six of Crows first because I understand that they've combined that into the series. Even though, although it's set in the same world, it's not set in the same exact place and it's not about the same people. But I have already started listening to Six of Crows. I'm definitely on a bit of a Lee Bardugo kick at the moment and the audiobooks are really really good. I'm enjoying them a lot. I do kind of wish I had paper copies of these books because I would really like to reread them in that format but as I'm on my book buying ban I'm going to be good and not do that at the moment. The last part of my video was going to be books that I'm currently reading but while messing about before filming. Oh, I have actually finished this book. So this does come off the giant TBR, which is great. And I've been reading it since I finished The Blindfold on the 2nd of August in the background while reading The Agatha Christie's. And it's Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon, which is a sensation novel written in Victorian times. I have this from a set of crime classics that I bought. The sensation novel was kind of a precursor to the crime novel. I've still got the case notes to read in the back of this, which is going to tell me I think a bit more about sensation novels and about Mary Elizabeth Braddon's life and career. So I'm looking forward to reading that still, but I've finished the book itself and it was really really good. There's a great mystery and I'm really surprised that I don't hear more about this book because for me it was comparable with Wilkie Collins. I've read The Moonstone and The Woman in White and although this was maybe not as exciting in places, it definitely really deserves to be talked about more as a great Victorian novel. It's apparently Mary Elizabeth Braddon's most famous work and I really really enjoyed this. It's a tale of Lady Audley and a man called George Torboys and his mysterious disappearance and it's just a fascinating read. When I was getting close to the end of this I actually didn't want to stop reading it to listen to an audiobook and I found that with my Audible membership there's now a version of this included for free. I did listen to a little bit of it on audiobook but the vast majority of this I actually read from this 
um, novel itself. The writing style was interesting, it was very different to say a Dickens. I haven't read very many Victorian books apart from Dickens and the Brontes. This wasn't a struggle to read at all, it was in quite plain English. Although I did find that towards the middle there were more parts where it was quite wordy. It was a very enjoyable read and I will look out for more of Mary Elizabeth Braddon's sensation novels. And finally I am currently reading Rebecca and I've just started buddy reading this with Shelley Swearingen and very excited to get into my second buddy read of the month and I've never read Rebecca before. thought I had but I'd actually just watched the Alfred Hitchcock film a long time ago and because of that I watched the recent adaptation on Netflix with Lily James and having read the first two chapters of this only I wish I hadn't watched that so recently because I know that it's going to majorly spoiler the book which I might not have remembered had I just stuck with having only watched the Hitchcock adaptation. Anyway it's really good so far, it has such an iconic opening and I'm going to really enjoy getting stuck into this and talking about it with Shelley. I will link Shelley's channel in the description below. Uh, so that's all so far for the month of August. I'll check in with you again soon. I hope you enjoyed this mid-month mini wrap-up of everything I've been reading. If you did enjoy it please give it a like and please subscribe if you haven't already. I do talk about books here on booktube on a very regular basis and I would love to hear from you in the comments too. Please let me know if you've read any of these books or would like to, or just drop me a comment to let me know what you've been reading in this August. Thanks for watching, I hope you'll join me again soon for another video all about books here on Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Bye for now!